Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over pulmonary edema. This is located in chapter 3 of the dive manual and my goal for this is to simplify it, give you a visual understanding so you can actually have a better understanding of, of what this is and, and how this affects uh, our divers. So, what does pulmonary edema uh, mean? What does that basically mean in one sentence? Well, it means there's fluid in the lungs. Definition, fluid in the lungs. Well, how do we get fluid in our lungs to where it causes us to cough, where it causes us to go hypoxic, possibly? So let's look. So if you look, if you follow my pointer, here's our trachea trachea and it goes down to the two bronchi. There's one bronchi, two bronchi, and it further uh, gets it further branches down to the bronchioles. You see the bronchioles? These four. Right there, right there, right there, right there. And then the alveoli. So you can't see you can't see the alveoli because they're very microscopic, but just imagine them at the end of all these bronchioles. I have another picture to its right. Uh, if you zoom in the bronchiole, you can see the alveoli. So let's look. Here's the alveoli, and here's the alveoli. 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 That is where? That is the site. That is the site of gas exchange. Gas exchange. It is what we think of when we think of the lungs. And these alveoli are filled with air, and they, they bring oxygen to the blood, and they remove uh, carbon dioxide from the blood. And then the carbon and the oxygen goes back to the heart and perfuses the rest of the body. So you can see here is the pulmonary um, artery. It, bran it branches further into the into the uh, the capillaries. Notice how they're blue. That means they're deoxygenated. And then the red, the pulmonary vein. Oh, I'm totally drawing, aren't I? The the uh, pulmonary vein that's red, and that's oxygenated. All right. So it gets oxygenated. It comes out the pulmonary vein, back to the uh, left atrium, left ventricle, out the aorta, to the brain, to the kidneys, to the rest of the body. But we can't really, I can't explain pulmonary edema just by looking at this, so let's zoom in even more. Let's take a closer zoom. So I'm going to draw my arrow right here. Okay, so let's look at the alveoli. This is the alveoli. This is the deoxygenated capillary right here. And the oxygenated capillary right here. Normally, we have oxygen diffuse into the blood and we have CO2 diffuse out of the blood and then into the alveoli where we can breathe out the carbon dioxide, right? This is the normal physiology of gas exchange. So pulmonary edema, it, it's never been proven on the exact uh, cause. There's no exact cause that, that's been proven thus far. The most studied and accepted hypothesis for pulmonary immersion pulmonary edema dealing with, with diving is, believe it or not, overhydration. Uh, there's a study done. Uh, there was eight divers and they all drank five liters of fluid. They drank five liters of fluid before the dive. When we drink fluid, we increase our blood volume because our plasma, 
plasma is part of the blood. Uh, water comprises a big portion of plasma. And when we pee, we decrease our blood volume. So when we're, when we're really dehydrated, we have low blood volume. And as we know, that could, that could cause a shock. But let's stay on track. So we have an increased fluid volume, right? Plus the immersion, the pressure of us being in the water at depth, bone crushing depths. That increases hydrostatic pressure. Key, this is bingo. This is the key word, hydrostatic pressure. When those two uh, mechanisms, mechanisms are involved, um, immersion plus uh, increased, very increased fluid volume, sh shall I say, that, that causes an increased hydrostatic pressure. So now let's think of how this can affect the fluid in our capillaries, in our cap the capillaries of the lungs. Think of a hose, a water hose. Have you ever seen the water hoses where when you turn it on full pressure, there's tiny holes all around the holes and the hose itself leaks, right? That Think of that as your capillary. Think of that as your capillary. If we start to have fluid from the capillary leak out. The pressure is great. It's going to leak out of the capillary. Well, where does it go? Well, the fluid in our capillary enters the interstitial space. What is the interstitial space? You've all heard what interstitial space is. Let me just clarify it. It is the space in between the tissue, the alveoli, and the blood vessel. The space in between the capillary and the alveoli right here, right here, all this, this is all interstitium. So it builds up in there. And as time goes on, well, where does it go next? Well, it's going to diffuse, this fluid is going to diffuse into the alveoli. It's going to diffuse in the alveoli. So, now we have a fluid filled alveoli and that's what pulmonary edema is that's how we get fluid in the lungs so what uh, symptoms might our patient uh, experience well if I well let's sh let me show you so normally air comes down here right air comes down into our trachea, uh, bronchi, bronchioles, and it arrives here at the alveoli for, for gas exchange. But there's a roadblock. Water is the roadblock. It can't diffuse. It can't diffuse in, and CO2 can't diffuse out. So we become, we can become, uh, we can develop hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is generally just a, uh, a light of oxygen in the blood. So think of hypoxia. We're going to cough. That's the body's response to uh, pulmonary edema is coughing. When you, when you have, you, you can feel it. If you've, ever, if you've ever been cold, I'm sorry, sick, and you feel congested in the, in the lungs, you cough, right? Same mechanism. You're, you want to get that out. Um, you can have signs of hypox uh, hypoxemia, but you're going to be shortness. You're going to have shortness of breath. You're going to have shortness of breath because you're you have low uh, oxygen saturation in your blood, and your brain is telling you to breathe more. Get that oxygen in my blood, but I can't. So those are the symptoms of um, pulmonary edema, and let me just add. Let me just add one more important one. Um, if the patient's lying down, 
that's going to bother him more. He's not going to want to lie down, depending on how bad it is. With immersion pulmonary edema, because it resolves so spontaneously, it might not be that big of a deal, honestly. So let's go into treatment. What is our treatment for pulmonary edema? Treatment. Put them on 100% O2. We want to increase his oxygen saturation, right? So the alveoli that, that aren't, that don't have edema, let's get some O2 in them, right? Uh, don't make him lay down. Uh, don't think you have to get him on a, on a spine board and transport. Uh, he can usually take care of himself. So let's get him to the hospital. And why do we need to take him to the hospital? Well, one, pretty obvious, it's not a diving related casualty. Uh, the chamber would do nothing for him. So we take him to the hospital to rule out, one, hypoxemia. They'll check his, they'll check his blood gases and all those uh, fancy lab work. Two, they want to, um, they want to know when it has resolved. They want him to be resolved of pulmonary congestion. And three, they want to rule out other causes. Because if you read the dive manual, it will say that this is a very rare, rare thing. But this exact pathophysiology can occur in more dangerous uh, diseases. Can you think of any? One, not so obvious, it's not obvious at all, uh, congestive heart failure. That would cause this exact mechanism. It would just be caused by the backup of the backflow of blood, not, um, not because of uh, the causes of diving. Two, let's say he uh, aspirated water. What if he was down there with a scuba rig? He had a scuba regulator, and he breathed in water. That's more dangerous. Uh, there's more fluid in the lungs from aspirating water at depth than there is from uh, regular pul normal pulmonary edema like I just, just described. So they want to rule out other causes. Rule, oh, rule out other. I'll keep that short. Rule out others. And they want to monitor recovery. And that's that. That is pulmonary edema. Uh, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Goodbye.